Welcome back, wonderful people. This is video three for chapter 10. And we're going to be taking a quick look at what the aggregate supply curve really looks like. Now we know that the Keynesians say it is horizontal because the price level is fixed or doesn't change. Does it really in a recession? Price level is going to drop and then it might stagnate, but is it exactly constant? That's, that's a severe description. The classical economists say it's vertical because they assume that wages have absolutely no restrictions on them, the price level can change at will, and that wages can be adjusted according to the price level without any consequences that won't hurt productivity, and therefore the amount of total production can remain the same. But then you have the intermediate range right here that is rather upsloping that shows that there's absolutely a connection between the price level and the real GDP or total production. They are not independent of one another. So most economists will say the intermediate range, the upsloping range, is what the aggregate supply curve actually looks like. So we continue to represent it the way we have always represented it. Nothing new there. Okay. We have one last point to make, and that is stagflation. So what is stagflation? Stagflation is really coming from when two relatively deadly things uh, or dangerous things kind of stagger and fall one on top of the other. Uh, like what? Well, obviously, if there's flation in here, we're looking at inflation. Two things, this is known as the twin maladies of high unemployment and high inflation hitting an economy at the same time. I will tell you right off the bat, it tends to be cost push inflation coupled with cyclical unemployment. It tends to be the kind of unemployment that comes from uh, an economy that's going through a downturn, a recession, uh, coupled with businesses being unable to push down costs enough so they feel that they need to force at least some of the price increase down onto the consumer. They push it down onto the consumer. Now, I'm not here to tell you they don't take advantage or they do, that they push all of it or some of it. Obviously, it depends on the business. Some, some businesses are just more aware of their customer base and their needs than other businesses. But what we are seeing here is it tends to be not demand pull inflation too much because demand pull inflation is easier to bring down. Uh, what steps the government takes to bring down um, government at, uh, demand pull inflation is simply much more likely to succeed than cost push inflation because cost push inflation can have global ramifications. So right now, a big reason why we're having cost push inflation in the United States is because of the chain interruption, the, pr the production chain interruption around the world. And so businesses here have a hard time getting enough of what they need quickly and on time and at the same prices as before. So this is going, especially like the shipping, for instance, as we even know now, right now, gas prices are cooling down, thank God, for a while they weren't. So let's look at this a little bit here. Stagflation, notice economic growth is down, but these two here, inflation and unemployment are up. This is not a good picture. The economy is going weaker and yet it's facing more heat from inflation and more pressure from unemployment. When these two here come together, which is usually not the case, because what usually happens is the economy slows down, unemployment goes up, there's less money circulating, there are uh, fewer dollars chasing uh, maybe more goods, and this, uh, or, or yeah, and then you end up with inflation here dropping. So when economic growth drops, inflation usually follows it. In this case, the opposite is happening. So if you look at the current forecast for the world, we're looking at 20, 2022 and 2023. Notice what we are forecasting, right? We're forecasting inflation to really have been an issue. Now, inflation is dropping and cooling. And right now, I read an article just this morning about how gas prices are expected, and this is August of 22, are expected to drop below $3 by the end of the year. I hope this is the case. Definitely, this is going to tell us that this inflation is going to ease. But if you look at 2023, there is still a concern that we're looking at less economic growth. Now, there's a cool off here in inflation. It's not, look at how steep this rise is versus, for instance, 23. And certainly, we're looking at 
8% versus, you know, 4% or less. But, and both are more gentle, right? The decline is more gentle in economic growth and the inflation is also rising at a more gentle slope. But either way, we're still concerned. Now, what happens with unemployment? Right now, unemployment is very, very robust. So we don't have unemployment rising. We have it dropping. So we don't have stagflation. There's a fear of stagflation more for the world in 2023 than necessarily for the United States because the world's problems can be harsher and worse and unmitigated, unlike what we have actually in the U.S. right now. This is all I have to say about this chapter. Thank you, guys. I'm going to give you my thank you slide. I enjoyed having you. I appreciate you. I hope you have a great one, and I'll see you in Chapter 11.